tonight on MTN, a scary situation that's unfortunately becoming all too common. But it definitely changed my mindset after I was hit. A trip to the ballpark turns dangerous. Now a Billings woman looking to take action to help other fans. Plus a solemn anniversary. Oh, it's just a day that we put ourselves second. Remember that everybody whose lives are lost. Billings firefighters remember 9-11 and the impact it continues to leave on so many lives and unknown dangers on Billings roads. That seems to be the most dangerous part of it is, is the reaction to the noise. For the first time, we see dash cam video as an officer runs over a combustible object. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us from Dealer Park here at 530. I'm Andrea Lutz. Russ Riesinger will be joining us in studio in just a minute. But first, the Billings Mustangs are in the playoffs tonight. But there is a Billings woman who is championing for change after a pretty scary situation right here in Section 118. And as you can see, these seats are great. There's no obstructions to the fields. But Don Larimer actually wants more protective netting right here. She's become the latest person to be struck in the head by a line drive last month from these seats. And as I found out, that incident is sparking some conversation. America's favorite pastime. My husband has a glove usually. We're always, you know, kind of conscientious about it, but we weren't with that guy because he was right-handed batter. Is quickly moving into present times. And we heard the crack and, and we both looked and he's sitting here and I'm sitting here and it was there. I mean, it was so sudden. Don Larimer never thought it would happen to her. I mean, I've seen people right near me hit before and it just didn't have the same reaction as when I personally got hit. Hit in the head with the baseball flying her way 90 miles an hour during a recent Billings Mustangs game. And then it just hit me directly right here. And you know, there was nothing I could have done. But now she's doing something about it. It's, it's definitely a concern. Dawn swelled in the days after the hit, and while medically she's okay, once the shock wore off, a bigger issue was unveiled. I think it's a liability. Dawn sent a letter to yeah. city council advocating for more netting. Yeah. Come to find out that process is already in the works. The level of concern has gone up now. Mike Pig with the city of Billings is currently pricing out extended netting to be installed by next summer. I, I don't think we can sacrifice safety for, for somebody else's convenience. Safety is at the core of the issue. Even last summer, a foul ball hit eight-year-old Serafina Moots in the head, also at Dealer Park, leaving a blood spot on her brain. This section is a little bit more known to get fly balls. Still nets at the baseball park come with some controversy. Many fans say it obstructs the view of the game. You know, there's still gonna be posts, there's still gonna be a net, but um, trying to make it as little bit of a disruption to viewing of the game as we can. Dawn knows there's a differing opinion, but realizes her injury could have been much worse. But it definitely changed my mindset after I was hit. Now it was back in 2018 that Major League Baseball decided to extend the netting further down and all of its affiliated minor league baseball parks were also handed down orders to extend netting to the foul pole no later than the start of the 2025 season. The Mustangs used to be affiliated, but that's no longer the case, which means they aren't mandated to do so. We do want to let you know that all four of Montana's ballparks don't have netting past the dugouts as of right now. This is the Glacier Ballpark, the newest of all of the ballparks in Montana. You can see that that net goes all the way above the stands, but it doesn't extend farther down. Netting or no netting, you can expect a couple thousand fans packed into Dealer Park for tonight's playoff home opener against the Missoula Paddleheads. It's looking pretty good out here right now, but will that weather cooperate? For more on the forecast, we're going to send it back inside to our Ed McIntosh. Well, tonight, Andrea, it looks like a pretty good night for baseball as conditions are going to be just about ideal at Dealer Park. We'll look for temperatures mid to lower 70s and a little sunshine will make it feel a bit warmer at first pitch. But by the time we get into the seventh inning with our sunsets happening just a little bit earlier, at least we'll feel a little bit of a chill in the air. So make sure that you plan for that. But as we get through the rest of the three game series, we'll be looking for areas of smoke off and on over the course of the next few days. Really more about visibility than 
and air quality, but still something to keep in mind, especially if you're sensitive to smoke. Temperatures are going to stay pretty close to seasonal averages. In fact, we'll see a little bit of a warm up for Tuesday, Wednesday, but by the time we get to Wednesday afternoon, it's our best chance of a rain delay. Details coming up. Morocco is in a three day mourning period after the strongest earthquake to hit North Africa in more than a century struck that country on Friday. More than 2,400 people are confirmed dead. At least another 2,000 people have been injured. Officials say more than 300,000 people have been impacted by the devastation, including two people with Montana roots. Tonight, Alina Howder receives a firsthand account of the tragedy through their eyes. It's challenging because you just don't know. You're just laying in your bed and then this thing happens and you have no warning. Brian Sealstead may be from Denton, Montana, but he's called the city of Efron in Morocco home for more than a decade. A Peace Corps mission brought him to the town of Omsi in 2007. I've heard anecdotally that there are like 20 people in town that have died. The areas of town with some of the older buildings have, were very strongly Hurt. The epicenter of the 6.8 magnitude earthquake was in the High Atlas mountain range, hitting small villages in the area the hardest. But it also, you know, knocked down buildings in Marrakesh and even as far as Casablanca and Rabat, some of the the buildings, I believe, were, were hurt. The quake was so massive that students like Hala Sanye felt it nearly 400 miles away in Efron. We felt it pretty much everywhere in Morocco. That's the scariest thing is that it was very far away and still we felt it from here. The 21 year old is from the capital of Rabat, but studies computer science in Efron. She also has a Montana connection after spending this year's spring semester in Bozeman. I was a Bobcat, so an MSU student, Montana State University. She says her Montana friends have been reaching out to ask if she's okay, a question she struggles to answer. This is exactly what I said to a friend. He said, hi, are you okay? And I said, Physically, yes. Emotionally, no. Despite the devastation, Sine says the tragedy has brought her country together. Everyone is donating money. Everyone is donating clothes. Everyone is donating the slightest thing they had. Much needed, especially as the country mourns the loss of thousands. We've uh, been to the semifinals of the World Cup all together and we're all so happy. And now we are all together again against something that happened that is very bad for the country. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Well, today, a somber day of remembrance as it marks 20 two years since the September 11th terror attacks killed nearly 3,000 people, forever changing this country. Here in Billings, firefighters reflected on the fateful day and the impact it continues to have on their lives. Charlie Klepp shares this story of a tragedy still fresh on so many minds. It's been 22 years since the terrorist attacks on September 11th. It's a day that completely changed the world as we knew it, and it hits home for many, and that includes the firefighters here in Billings. If you were alive during 9-11, you probably know exactly where you were when it happened. I remember going to school that day, but it was almost, you were just kind of going through the motions. Basically, the uh, entire station gathered around the TV. Many from the Billings Fire Department do, and that includes Battalion Chief Kevin Bentz, who had just begun his career as a firefighter in this very station. The TV room was full all day long from the, the fire chief on down to the newest firefighters, which at the time was me. Vince says it's a day that still makes him pause and think. It makes you really reflect back on, you know, every day you walk out that door and you come here, you don't know what you're going to face that day. It's a day of remembrance of not just the 9-11, but also of, of everything that transpired from that. Others, like Captain Cameron McCamley, weren't firefighters yet. McCamley was in high school, but his father was serving in Great Falls. And as the stories come out and you hear these things, you understand why they were doing what they were doing. He says that he and other firefighters hear the stories of first responders giving the ultimate sacrifice from a different perspective. Well, everybody talks about where they were that day and you know how it brought the country together. Others at the station, like 24-year-old firefighter Cameron Ash, don't remember much from the day, but he says it's part of the reason he is here. Watching the videos every year when 9-11 came around, you know, looking at those courageous firefighters that went up always made me want to be able to to have the courage that they did one day. 
a day that changed the world for firefighters everywhere as they continue to remember those lost. A lot of the things that we used to do have, have changed, and that's, that's good. It's, it sucks that it takes a, a sentinel event like this, but I, I think anybody who lived through that can realize that that was going to be a turning point. You know, when you wake up on 9-11, you always think that you know, every other firefighter woke up just like I did this morning and didn't come home to their families. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, we'll dive deeper into the combustible objects spotted on Billings roads and why they have police and drivers concerned. Plus, our next super senior is serving the community while keeping an old school alive. And in sports, the Red Hot Mustangs begin their playoff run. We'll get you ready for the action.